So this is where I took my risk and my challenge because she, she's a Douglas alumna. I read her book and I will never ever, where is she? Will never forget that book. You know how there is some, there's a novel that you read or a story or nonfiction that will stay with you for your life? Um, and this will stay with me and other people I have spoken to have said that so we thought wow let's see if she will be our convocation speaker at our hundredth anniversary convocation and I wrote her a letter and it was a week later and I didn't hear back and I was extremely nervous um, to talk to her and we were at the same table at a at an event in New York and um, I decided I'm going to just lean in and go over and bug her and ask her. And she was so sweet and generous and actually said, oh, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you right away. But she said, I would love, I would be honored to come speak to your graduates. So, uh, and we had a nice, very nice time to talk. She has an extremely warm, warm, loving heart. And I think you'll hear about that today. So in Bolo Mube, and Bue authored the best-selling book, Behold the Dreamers. The New York Times no best-selling novel earned the Penn Faulkner Award for Fiction, the Blue Metropolis Words to Change Award, and was an Oprah's Book Club selection. It was named a notable book of the year by the New York Times and the Washington Post, and a best book of the year by over a dozen publications. The novel has been translated into 10 languages, adapted into an opera, and optioned for a movie. Mbolo Mbue is an alumna of Douglas College, class of 2001, and of Columbia University. So please join me in welcoming her with loud applause to the podium. Thank you. What an honor this is for me. Thank you, Dean Leet, for hounding me and coming after me. Um, and thank you, everybody. I, um, I have to say that this is just the most beautiful looking class of graduates. Um, I, I got all choked up watching you guys come in because it was not long ago that I graduated from here. And I remember um, one of my children was graduating from um, preschool going to kindergarten. And I was crying, you know, preschool graduation, I was crying, and I felt the same way today. Uh, <laughs> uh, so congratulations, graduates. Um, I am so full of joy today, just to stand here to see you, to know what it's like to be one of you, and to know that you're graduating from my 100-year-old um, alma mater. Um, you did it, you know. You studied hard, you had some fun, maybe not too much fun, at least the right amount of fun. And now you're a college graduate. I'm so proud of you. I really am. I understand what it takes. And it means a lot to me to be here and to celebrate this moment with you. And to the parents and family and friends, what a fantastic job you did supporting our graduates. Congratulations to you too. And, And to the deans and professors and administrative staff and every single person who works here at Douglas and at Rodgers, thank you for all the hard work you did to get our graduates here today. Congratulations to you too. <laughs> Dear graduates, 16 years ago, I was where you were today, graduating from Douglas. I remember the graduation speaker that year was a poet, Sonia Sanchez. She spoke so beautifully, but please don't ask me what she said. <laughs> I don't remember anything. I was late to the ceremony, so it was a different sort of day for me. And I think it's still the case that you all had to line up alphabetically, um, and it was a case back then 16 years ago, but because I came late, I missed the lineup. And I had to sit somewhere in the back with a guest because I couldn't just walk in. I didn't, there wasn't a seat for me. And when it came time to get on stage to get your diploma, I had to find where I stood. So I kept on going to people, what does your last name start with? Does it start with an M? You know, is it McDonald or Martinez? And my last name is MB, which is not very common in America. So 
eventually I found um, where I should stand, and it all worked out well, but thank you for coming on time today. <laughs> so at least everything is nice and quiet. Um, so what I'd like to tell you today is a story about two graduates. So I'm a writer, like the dean said, I, I tell stories for a living, so I thought I'd start off by telling you a story about two graduates. And I'll call those graduates graduate A and graduate B. Graduate A and graduate B were around the same age. They grew up in similar towns where they were taught valuable life lessons by parents and teachers. They went to the same college, beautiful college like Douglas. They got the same great teachings from their professors. The speakers at their graduation ceremony said what their parents and professors and life had been teaching them since birth that they should be strong and courageous and believe in themselves and go forth and live wonderful, fulfilling lives. Graduate A and Graduate B, they both clapped and they cheered. They were so excited about what we were going to do with their lives. After the graduation ceremony, they went to their homes. And that is where their stories went in different directions. Because Graduate A said, OK, now that I've been taught these things, I am going to apply them in my life. I am going to do the things I have been taught. No matter the cost, I will do what I have been told to do. And she did it. She practiced what she had been taught. She put it into action. Despite all the ups and downs and hardships she, felt she faced, she went on to find joy and fulfillment, living the life she was created to live. As for Graduate B, it was as if she would never heard all the messages. She knew them, but maybe she forgot. Or maybe applying the lessons were too hard. Maybe she was worried about what would happen if she failed. Maybe she was concerned about what people would say about her if she was too courageous, too ambitious, too strong, too determined, too confident, whatever it was, maybe she was concerned. Or maybe she just couldn't get off social media long enough because she had to keep up with the latest news or post a cool picture of herself hanging out with her girls. Whatever the reason, Grade B do not do the things she'd been taught to do or advised to do. The wonderful things like what the dean or what the first lady or what the chancellor said, she didn't apply them in her life. Ten years after graduation, she looked at herself in the mirror and she knew that the life she was living wasn't the life she was born to live. She was full of regrets and sadness, watching, watching her life of promise slipping away. Now let me ask you, what was the difference between these two graduates? Well, I already gave you the answer, but I'll say it again. It was the doing. It was the applying of the lessons and the advice. It was the living it. Dear friends, your parents and guardians have taught you your teachers and professors have taught you. You've learned from the lives of great men and women like Maya Angelou who was mentioned today and many other great Americans and people all over the world. You've read books and tweets and memes which have all offered you sage advice. Do this, don't do that, be this, don't be that. And you said, yes, I agree to this, so true. And now you know, but what good is it just to know? Is it enough for you to say, now I know? No, my dear friends. All the knowing in the world will do nothing for you if you don't apply it, if you don't live it. There is no substitute for doing it. You can talk about it all you want. You can advise other people to do it. You can say, Oprah says we should do this, or Sheryl Sandberg says we should do that. But in the end, you must do it. Doing is not easy. I know it. If you were, the world will be full of doers. Many years ago, I read a wonderful book called The Four Agreements. You may have heard about this book. It was a huge bestseller, one of my all-time favorite books. I finished reading that book, and I thought, what great teachings. Now I know. I'm going to stop doing X and start doing Y. Yay. But guess what? I did not do it. Yet I love quoting the first of the four agreements, which said, be impeccable with your words. Use the power of your words in the direction of truth and love. Of course, I said, so true. And then I did the opposite. I continued gossiping, and I love the good gossip. <laughs> but gossiping is exactly what that book said I should not do. 
But how could I pass on a good gossip? Oh, to pass judgment on another person is so good. I spent hours gossiping. And then one day, during a not so great time in my life, I went through an experience after which I knew I would never be the same again. Even though I'd been a doer since I was a child, I had to raise my game and the gossip had to go, among with many other things. I decided that I had to apply the lessons from that book and to use my words for good, which I ended up becoming a writer, which is all about words, but that was even before the writing. It wasn't easy for me to stop doing certain things, and I still struggle with not gossiping, because I do love to gossip still, but, I, but now I know, and I started putting my energy into being more positive, and it worked wonders for my life. I pushed myself into living other lessons I'd been taught by great men and women and by professors and many other life teachers, and it made all the difference. But you may say to me, being that doing is not easy, how do we do? How do we put into practice all we've been taught, all the great advice we get in today? Advice like, be brave, work hard, be kind, don't give up, be fearless, be confident. How do we do this doing? One word, my sisters, choices. Believing in yourself, that's a choice. Being positive, that's a choice. Being judgmental, that is a choice. Working hard, that is a choice. Showing compassion, that is a choice. How you respond to anything in life, that is a choice. You will not have a choice on what is going to happen after today to you. Whether it's bad weather or losing your job, many, many things you will not have a choice. The choice you will have is how to react to them and what to make out of them. How do you respond to bad weather or unemployment or betrayal or your weight or the fact that everyone seems to be having more, more fun than you? It's all entirely up to you. You have a choice. You make your choice. You can choose to be afraid, or you can choose to be strong. What Graduate A did is she made choices in line with truth and love. Graduate B, not so much. I once read a story about a woman who went through a horrible experience. She was asked how she managed to carry on. She said, I choose to put one foot in front of the other. Bravery is a choice. Kindness is a choice. Joy is a choice. Confidence is a choice. What will you choose? Four years ago, I was unemployed and looking for an agent to represent a novel I'd written. Every agent I wrote to rejected me. Finally, an assistant at an agency read my manuscript and said, this is phenomenal. My boss is going to love it and offer to represent you. You can imagine how happy I was. On the day I was supposed to get the confirmation that the agent was indeed going to represent me, I got an email from the assistant saying, sorry, she doesn't love your book. She can't represent you. It was painful. I had to choose how to take it. I chose sadness. I chose self-pity. I could barely get out of bed the next day. I went to the grocery store and I cried as I waited in line. It was really, really bad day for me. It was probably one of my worst failures ever. And then I remembered all the wise people who had said, never give up. And I put my head up and chose another response. I chose to not give up. I went back to my computer and I rewrote the story. And four months later, the agent who had rejected me offered to represent me. She sold the book a couple of months later to a publisher, and the book was published close to two, two years ago, and he has opened up great opportunities for me, including the honor of standing before you today. None of this was easy, but I'm glad I did it. And I'm convinced you'll be glad too that you choose to hold your head up and believe. Do not let your choices be ruled by fear. Do not let your choices be ruled by concern about what other people might say. Choose wisely. Consider that what you sow is what you're going to reap. Nobody ever planted beans and harvested apples. Nobody ever achieved great things by doing things that are contrary to greatness. Choose with the understanding that every choice matters. Choose with confidence. To me, confidence is the certainty that all of creation is good. And even if something doesn't go well, some good is going to come out of it. 
Walking up here this morning, I was confident that if I tripped and fell, you guys wouldn't burst out laughing at me. And if you do, and someone makes a video of it and puts it on YouTube, then at least one person will learn that it's, maybe it's not such a good idea to wear high heels while delivering an address. <laughs> and if you can, have a sense of humor about your life and your hardships. A year after I graduated college, I worked really hard to save $500 to buy my first car. I don't suppose I need to tell you what that car looked like, considering that it cost $500. <laughs> my friends were afraid of entering it. My friend is laughing really hard back there because she remembers the car. <laughs> she was afraid of that car. She was like, girl, I'll drive, OK? Just keep that car at home. Uh, but it was a hideous thing. It was a box with wheels, only two doors opened. It had no CD player, so I had to buy a cassette player and put on the passenger seat. Because it did not have AC in the summer, I had to buy a portable fan, which I studied with one hand and drove with the other hand. <laughs> but I thought it was the coolest, funniest thing in the, to have this hideous car. And I was so proud of myself for owning a car. And I think having a sense of humor about my car made me a more confident person. I used to drive that car to sell vacuum cleaners from door to door. But that one is a story for another day. <laughs> the last thing I'd like to say to you, dear friends, is the importance of surrounding yourself with people who love you. Not people who put up with you, not frenemies, but people who actually love you. That the family or friends, people who support you and believe in you. Learn how to let go of those who do not wish for your good. And treat those who love you and stand by you through good times and bad times with utmost kindness and loyalty. Treat them and everyone you meet with kindness. Every human is worthy of your dignity and respect. I am so thrilled for you today, and I send you all best wishes for a wonderful life overflowing with love and joy and beauty, so that one day, no matter how many years you live, the world will know that you were here. Congratulations and God bless you all. That was beautiful. Frankly, it's hard to follow that with words because that was breathtaking.